Chair, you are now live. All right. Good morning, members, officers and members of the public who may be viewing the live stream this morning. Welcome to this meeting of the Grants Committee, which is the 25th of September. Um, my name is Councillor Joe Hales and I'm the Chair of the Grants Advisory Committee. For the information for members of the public, the role of our committee is to consider and make recommendations to the lead cabinet member for finance, Councillor John Williams, you'll see him down the bottom with the beard, on applications made under the council's grant schemes. Councillor Williams then makes his decision taking account of our recommendations. Members, please can you remember to mute your microphones unless you are called to speak. You will need to unmute your microphone in order to speak. OK, so we go to the agenda now. Agenda item number one. May I have apologies, please, Aaron? Yes, Chair, thank you very much. We have received apologies from Councillor Claire Delderfield this morning. And do we have a substitution? We do, Chair. Uh, Councillor Bill Handley will be substituting for Councillor Delderfield. Thank you very much indeed, Councillor Handley. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to go through the roll. Oh, Aaron, you could go through the roll call if you don't mind. Actually, probably better. Of course not, Chair. Uh, members, I will read out your name. Please could you confirm that you are present, remembering to unmute your microphones before you speak. Uh, Councillor Donton. Yes, present. Councillor Ellington. Present. Good morning. Councillor Handley. Present. Hello. Councillor McDonald. Present. And uh, Councillor Hales, clearly we are aware that you're present, but and uh, Councillor Williams has been briefly introduced, but uh, if you could just briefly introduce yourself again. Good morning, I'm uh, Councillor John Williams. I'm lead member for finance. Uh, thank you, councillors. Aaron, do you want to introduce the uh, members of staff? Uh, of course. Um, so we've got uh, several members of staff here presenting reports this morning. Um, we have John London, who will be presenting the community chest report. Hello. Uh, we have uh, Jay Clark who will be uh, assisting with that. And we have uh, Leslie McFarlane who will be presenting our reports on the mobile warden schemes. Um, I'm not sure if Leslie has her, her camera on currently. Oh, I have. Yeah, she has, yeah. Oh, I have. You Apologies. It's, uh, it's, uh, you're just hiding off of my screen. All and right. uh, in the background, we have Jonathan Moulton who will be assisting us with the streaming today. And uh, yeah. myself who will clerk the meeting. Thank you very much, Aaron. That's really great. Much obliged. OK, members, uh, agenda item number two, declarations of interest. Do any members of um, the committee have interest to declare in relation to any of the business on the agenda? Councillor Ellington. Uh, Chair, I would like to declare a non-pecuniary interest in the uh, application for a mobile warden scheme for Lulworth and Fendrayton. They're part of my um, patch my ward and I have been uh, discussing with them their best um, options. Thank you very much. Councillor Henley. Similarly, Chairman, um, I, I, um, um, both of my villages over in Willingham have, have applied for mobile wardens and I have been engaging with officers and the parish councils to put it into place. So I declare a non pecuniary interest. That's fantastic. Thank you very much. OK, uh, members, uh, agenda item number three. This is the minutes from our last meeting. I'm going to go through the usual process. So if you could access your minutes, I'll just go through the page numbers. If you could sing out if there's anything that uh, concerns you or you believe that should be changed. So that's page one. And I beg your pardon, this was the 28th of August. Sorry. So it's page one. Page two. And obviously page three is just the sign off. Is everybody happy with that? Agreed. I'll take the silence as an affirmation then. Uh, so I'll Agreed. sign I'll, I'll sign those off then. Yeah, thank Agreed. you very much. Indeed. Uh, Joe, Joe, Joe. Claire, yeah. Yes, it's me. Um, yes, just one small point. Um, I sent an apology for absence and Bill Handley was my substitute. I don't know whether that needs to be noted that Bill was my substitute so that it's clear that someone was in my place. I mean, yes. Bill is present, but um, we did, we, you did have a full compliment. OK, um, Aaron, would you make those adjustments, please? Thank you. Um, Terrific. Okie dokie. Uh, item number four, community chest. Um, 
gentleman, John or Jay? Who's going to be? Is that you, John? Uh, it is indeed, if that's okay, Chair. Please, thank you. Crack on. Thank you very much. Uh, our first applicant is a deferral from the Global Learning Idea Exchange, uh, GLIE. Uh, this is, you'll be familiar, the, the hook cards of the company design time for educational resource application uh, that has come to the committee on two previous occasions. Um, at the last meeting that we uh, the, the, that I was at, um, we we asked if if it for uh, them to um, uh, explain exactly what they're about in their own words in a concise manner. So Antonio has uh, watched the live stream from the previous uh, time that the committee uh, looked at his uh, proposal and has prepared this statement. Our hook cards are designed to complement the great teaching and learning that takes place in school. They subtly encourage learners to discuss and consider issues regarding sustainability and equality, in turn building compassion. The County District Plan highlights its determination to assist communities becoming more sustainable, building the skills required for that to happen. I wholeheartedly feel that the most impactful way for that to happen is through schools. Our hook cards and the resources assistance we provide at Will for free will no doubt build skills and knowledge regarding this. Schools can decide the time that they commit to implementing to our resources, be it a 15 minute discursive activity per week to an actual lesson within classes weekly timetable. The resources we provide will all evolve around our hook cards. It is our intention, should our application be granted, that 100 South Cambridgeshire schools and community groups will receive a pack of hook cards highlighted as a courtesy of the District Council. With the cards, I will include an invite for schools to access free online learning slash training that will show how they can teach their children, how they can live sustainably and become fair, inclusive and active members for their community and society. Uh, this is a project which costs uh, £637 and change, and they have applied for the entirety of that project cost. Thank you very much, John. Over to you, members. Has anyone got any comments? It's a, it has a substantially more information than we've had in the past, to be fair, and it's quite clearly laid out now. Um, so I'm I'm looking at all your faces now, thinking who's going to speak first. <laughs> I think I think I think chair it, it gives us uh, it gives me anyway the information I was looking for, and I'm satisfied. Thank you. I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to pressure you now, Councillor Ellington. I I just feel uncomfortable. The the right words are being used about sustainability um, and compassion and equality. But I I'm always quite concerned about things like in whose judgment and whether there is an element of brainwashing in any sort of, I, I do have an MA in, in education and my concern all the way through has been that when you teach people, you are influencing their judgment and you have to be extremely careful about making them bias in any way. You can give them facts, but you shouldn't be imposing your. Um, if you have a, a, a very strong view about things, be imposing that. And so there's, there's just an inkling around there that just makes me feel uncomfortable. Sorry. Don't apologise, that's what this is for. Councillor Dalton. Um, yeah, I, I have some very practical questions still. Um, in the uh, piece, in the text provided, um, the pronoun moves from I to we, um, and I'm not sure who the we is, how many people are involved in this organisation, if it is simply uh, the person whom John has just mentioned, because the text ends with, I will include an invite. That, so that's one question. How many people are involved in this global learning idea exchange? What kind of organisation it is? And then mm -hmm. under organisation 
type. The CIO is mentioned, but the application is still pending and they're not CCVS registered. So if we gave a grant to whom or to what would we be giving the money? And I'm, I still think that we don't have that very basic information. And then uh, finally, on a piece of information, have we actually seen what a hook card is and how it would work? Thank you, Claire, that's great. Councillor Henley. Um, I feel very much in the same way that uh, Councillor Daunton does. I, I don't have the benefit, I, I haven't got the benefit of having heard um, about hook cards before because this, I, I wasn't in the meeting, didn't attend the meetings where it was discussed previously. Um, my wife works in education, I've never heard of them. Um, I'm, I'm like, like Councillor Daunton, I'm, I, I'm not sure I can support this to be perfectly honest with the information that I have in front of me. I, I wouldn't want to say, I wouldn't want to, to, to dismiss it completely, that might be unfair, but certainly with what I can see here and what I've heard, I don't think I can, I don't think I can support it. Fair enough. I'll, I'll give you my my opinion then. I was, I was very much erring on the side of Peter, uh, Councillor Macdonald, with uh, you know the information's come in and that's great and we've ticked the box and what have you. But having listened to both Sue and Claire speak um, so eloquently, the pair of them, with regards to their their own knowledge and and the the questions and doubts, I'm I'm very much erring on the side of the four of you. Um, Peter, go ahead. Um, yeah, thank, thanks, Chair. Uh, the only bit of, uh, I don't disagree or uh, I, I understand Councillor Handley's, Councillor Daunton's reservations, but don't forget the arbiter of this is the school. The, these will be provided to the school. There is no obligation on the school to use it if they don't feel it's appropriate. Um, <laughs> my guess is, and it's a total guess, I haven't, I haven't seen the hook cards, I must admit. Um, that, that, you know, some schools will say, oh, this fits very well with the curriculum and other schools will say it, it doesn't. Um, but but they they will. Um, uh, they will be the arbiters of really addressing and I know where Councillor Ellington is coming from, uh, and I think we have to trust the schools. Mm. OK. Um, John London. Thank, thank you very much. Um, just as uh, as uh, an aside, I'm trying to find the the email. I've I've had uh, a, a large number of communications with Antonio. He has given the names of two other people who he has said is on the council. Um, I don't have any direct contact details for those people. Um, the only communication I have had is 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 with Antonio, the main uh, the main person I have been communicating with, but he did give names of other people in one of the emails. Thank you. Do you want to take your hand down, John? Oh, sorry. OK, Councillor Williams. Yeah, th uh, to be honest, um, Chair, I, I'm not um, happy with this application um, for the reasons that were given by Councillor Dalton and, and Councillor um, Handley. I'm First of all, there's no guarantee that any school will use these cards, in which case the funding will be wasted. Um, I would have liked to have been reassured that they have been in touch with the schools um, as part of their business plan, so that at least they know that some schools would be using them. It does appear from what the information we have, it's really much a cold canvas a cold call on the schools mm -hmm. so our money just could be completely wasted so i yeah. think i would like to know what schools will be using these cards or if you know i don't we don't need to have the um detail of the class or anything but we need to know that the schools have signed up to using these cards i think before we can agree to give them the money. OK, Councillor Henley. Uh, um, just would like your advice on this. Uh, if we were to reject this application now, there's nothing to stop 
uh, Antonio from applying in the future with a more uh, comprehensive application. Is that true? I believe that's the case. Aaron, correct me, or John, sorry, beg your pardon, John. That is correct, yeah, they can yeah, apply I mean, multiple times, yeah. Yeah, they can they can learn from their mistakes and come back to us if uh, if they can give us a good case, we can consider it again. Yeah, yeah we, we have done a lot of uh, work trying to tease this information out. It has been long and tedious and this is the culmination of what we have. Um, so that's all we can present to you. Thank you. Right. OK, oh, I um, the, the, uh, sorry, Chair. It, it is a case of I have I have significant uh, charge of A4 paper uh, with regards to this, um, but there, there has been some difficulty perhaps um, collapsing that down into a meaningful bullet pointed uh, uh, set of information for you. Right, OK. OK, members, am I? I, I think unless Peter's going to vote differently. Um, oh, we'll just go to the vote, shall we? Could you put your hand up um, to, to show support for this grant? Those are Peter, thank you. And those uh, who are going to reject the grant. That's myself, Claire, Sue and Bill. OK, so that's that's a, a vote for rejection, I'm afraid, Aaron. And John, um, I'd like to say thank you very much, actually, uh, to all of you for that and the the way that you all spoke about it. I think it was it's a testament to how much we we put in with the officers' time as well and what have you and the thought process behind it. So I'm I'm extremely grateful, and I think we've we've done the decision justice. So so thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. Can I say to John? When you go back to them, could you say to them that really what's missing is a, is is the agreement of, you know, at least one school that they will use these cards um, so that at least then we know that there is a project there that's going to happen and we're not just going to give people money to produce something that's going to be wasted. Thank you, Brilliant. Councillor. I will add that to the uh, to, to, to the letter when I send that letter. But uh, John, if I can add to that, if I may, uh, Councillor Williams, um, if we have like the, you know, the school uh, actually signing up to it, but it would be nice to have their opinion as to what, rather than just say, yeah, we're going to sign up, but actually the school to write back and say, we think this is blah, 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 blah. So actually like almost a curriculum based response. That way that should justify uh, and help placate Sue, because he made a direct reference to that, and then obviously the other bits and pieces for the rest of us. Okay, thank you very much. When you're ready, John, number two. Number two. Uh, so uh, the next one is uh, Orchard Road Community Group, and I believe you should be able to see something on your screens now with regards to that. Is that correct? Certainly can, thank you. A map and a photograph. Fantastic, yes. Uh, so uh, this is a group set up by Sean Furby, uh, who has assured me that if he gives his name, uh, some some members of the uh, will, 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 will know who he is. Uh, this is a small piece of land on, on Orchard Road, uh, which in, in Histon and Impington, which is owned by uh, South Times District Council, which is just uh, mowed on a on an on an irregular basis by the council, which has been um, uh, informally adopted with permission by the Orchard Road Community Group. They have already placed picnic benches on this area, and uh, they are hoping to also install two 50 litre litter bins. Uh, when these bins are installed, the Orchard Road Community Group will undertake to empty the bins and to make sure that that, that happens. And they have a verbal, um, they, they've had a conversation with the Parish Council uh, that the Parish Council has said if if the bins are well used, then the, then the Parish Council would look towards uh, adding them to the list of bins that, the, that they empty around around the village. Uh, the Orchard Road Community Group is uh, an unconstituted group of 10 members of, of the local community, and this is the second piece of 
ground in the village that they have started to uh, sort of sort of take over and try to improve. They are applying for £160 towards these bins, uh, which is a total cost of £270, and they've already received £110 uh, by contributions and donations from local residents. Thank you. Thank you very much. Members? Can I ask a question, Chair? Um, do we know if the opinions of the local members have been sought? I mean, this isn't a huge sum and we shouldn't spend a lot of time on it, but do we know if the local members are supported? I don't, I, but John may do. I need to apologise. I believe I omitted to ask the local members, which okay, is well, it's not made. the end of the it's not the end of the world, John. Um, it isn't a huge sum of money, but uh, yeah, I would have. It would have been nice if we'd had their, their support, wouldn't it? Would have made it a much clearer yeah. application, I think. Yeah. Councillor Anton. I'm very supportive of this. I just wondered whether there was an opportunity for one of the bins to be a recycling bin um, in order to follow our, our ethos as, as trying to be more eco-friendly. That's, that, that, that's, that's lovely. Anybody else got to speak? Um, yes, please, Joes. Um, I, I'm very supportive of this. I'm particularly the principal. I'm just sort of anxious about the litter bins um, and the fact that it depends on people's goodwill to empty them. And I just wonder if advice has been sought from Trevor and his team from the local um, waste management officer um, on that, because it does seem like a very good community group, but community groups um, come and go dependent on the goodwill of the community. And I, I, I would love to support it. I do in general, but I just have this anxiety about the emptying of the bins. Mm. John? Uh, hold on, I am I'm pulling up the information. No, uh, sorry, wrong John, beg your pardon. Councillor Williams is my fault, sorry. Thank you, Chair. Sorry, John. Um, yeah, that's it. that was the question I was going to ask, actually. Who's going to empty these bins? These bins are actually going to be on South Cam's land. Um, so will we be emptying the bins uh, free of charge? Because they are on that. Normally, if they were on a parish council land, we would be charging the parish council to empty them. So are we going to be charging the residents to empty these bins? If they're on our land, should we actually be charging anybody and should they be collected ourselves? If that's the case, <laughs> has anyone told Trevor that we're going to put two bins here and we're going to expect him to collect from them? Um, so I think we need to find that out before we go ahead and, and, and allow them to do this. And do housing know they're going to do this? As have they approached housing and said we want to put litter bins on your land? Um, so can, can can I have some information? I mean, if if we if they haven't, then I think before we can go ahead with this, we really do need assurances that the emptying of the bins has been sorted uh, before this goes ahead. Okay, thank you, John. John, um, you're on, and if you could add into your thought process, that's John London. Um, Sue's comment about the recycling bin, it may be a different, it may a different cost, the, the, the 160 quid here, but if you want to go to a recycling bin, they may be somewhat more expensive. So, where you go. Um, so, I can confirm uh, this is, this is not from talking to Trevor directly, this is from talking to Sean Furby, uh, that uh, he was, uh, that, that uh, we have said that we won't uh, put bins in ourselves because there's no evidence of a requirement of bins in the area. Um, and that from Sean's perspective, the reason why there's no evidence of a requirement is because it, it's currently not a space that's being used. They've only just put in the park benches. It's only just starting to be used by the community. Um, the people who he has been speaking to previously with regards to the previous piece of land that they worked with was South Cam's uh, housing and they've already applied for a grant to South Cam's housing for the improvement of that previous piece of land 
And when they approached uh, housing for the improvement of this piece of land, they were told that they can't apply for more than one, one, uh, one uh, set of funding and was advised to, um, to put in a community chest uh, grant. So uh, they then also went to the parish council and the parish council's response was, well, if, if South Cams don't think that these bins are going to be used, then we're not going to empty them. However, in, in, in this was in, an, in a conversation rather than a formal email, the parish council then said, um, or according to Sean, the parish council then said, well, you know, if you, if you evidence that the bins are being used and you empty them for the first year and, and they are being used, then we'll take them on. OK, uh, Bill. Yeah, thanks, uh, Joe. So I, I, I'm inclined to, it's, it is a relatively small sum. I, I do understand and respect John's views on this, John Williams' views on this. I do understand that, um, but it's a relatively small sum of money and I'm willing to get, and it does say in the report that the parish council will be emptying them in the future, so I, I, I'm inclined to support it. Sorry, Bill, but parish councils don't empty bins. They get the, us to empty bins and they yeah, pay us to yeah, empty bins. Yeah. So unless okay, the parish well, look, council I, it, it, has an, strongly, an John, agreement I'm, I'm for us to empty the bins, I'm one at a time, not guys. happy about okay. this. I'm not happy about this. I'm not, until we have a assurance that these bins are going to be emptied by someone on a regular basis then I'm not prepared to agree to it. Okay, okay. I think Sorry. we should, Chair, can I suggest yeah. that you approach the head of housing uh, and, um, and ask the head of housing to sort this out. I haven't heard, I mean I, I, I do not know of a policy which says that local communities only get one chance of getting money from housing. Um, I'm, I'm certainly not happy with the response from housing and if necessary I, I'll be happy to get involved with this. I, I personally think these bins should be supplied by housing and um, and and um, I, I think we should pursue that first before we agree to this. That's what I like to see, budget rules, that's excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Bill. Yeah, Chairs, I, I'm, I'm, having heard John, I'm, I'm willing to support John's view on this now. OK, Jay. You're still muted, fella. That's it. Oh, you just come off, I think. Sorry. That's it. <laughs> Had to be the first. Um, I'm more than happy to take this forward with housing and uh, Trevor's team to try and uh, dig a little bit deeper into what, what the issues are. Um, so I'll take that forward after this meeting, if, if you wish. Thank you. Right, members, I'm, I'm looking at all the faces and I'm thinking the, the temperature of the room, if you like, is that we defer this waiting on John and Jay's uh, research and what have you with other departments and other information, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Is that is that any yes? Thumbs up, please. Yeah, um, Joe, could we say that in uh, principle it's, um, you know, we like the idea of the community involvement, but we want to look at the very important practical details. Absolutely, and that, and to be fair, where Sue mentioned the thing about the recycling, it might be something they'd like to ask the Sean to see if that would be of benefit and how we can work through that at the end. Yeah. All right, that, that's I fantastic. It, I hope the message that goes from our officers to this uh, these people is encouraging. That's what I would like. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, over to you again, John. Thank you very much. Uh, Could be the Swavesy Memorial Hall. Can I declare an interest because it's my patch, but I have nothing to do with it. OK, thank you, Sue. Thank you very much. Uh, again, you should now see uh, the picture that was provided by the uh, George Long Charity for Swavesy Memorial Hall. Uh, this is an application for the can uh, to buy a cycle shelter. Um, there was a it's a project cost of uh, a little over four and a half thousand pounds and they are applying for one thousand uh, pounds of that the uh cycle shelter will be uh, one of a variety of styles uh, the example of which is is shown here from the comprehensive um uh, information that was provided on 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 this uh, application the applicant has stated that they've consulted with the halls users and that uh, the halls users have all agreed that the provision of a, a, a cycle shelter would be useful for them. 
And the African also says that the, the shape of the village is such that uh, it currently encourages car use because certain areas of the village are really too far to walk. However, they are very, very short car rides or short cycle rides. So um, the opinion is that if a cycle shelter is provided, it would definitely uh, help move people from uh, from from their cars into bikes. Uh, and the opinion was also given that the local cycle infrastructure is such that even people from from other villages that are coming in to use the hall uh, would be would be uh, able to cycle rather than than use the cars. Thank you very much. Thanks. Could you take the uh, screen down for us? Uh, yeah, sorry. Thanks, doing that. Thank you very much. OK, Councillor Henley, I see you got your hand up. I'd like to support this wholeheartedly. Um, Swavesy is a linear village. Those who don't know it, it's long and thin. You live at Boxworth End. Um, it can be a good 20, 25 minutes walk to get to the Memorial Hall. So people tend to drive and often you get in the um, you get you get to the Swavesy Memorial Hall and the parking car parks full and they're all parking on the road. Encouraging cycle use has got to be the right way to go. So I am I'm 100 percent in favour of this. Thank you, Councillor Dalton. Uh, similarly, I, I think it's a, it's a good application for a good purpose. I, I'd support it wholeheartedly. Thank you, Councillor Macdonald. Um, yes, uh, I'd agree with the observations from Councillor Hanley. It seems ideal for Swavesy. Superb. Councillor Linton, I'll come to you last, obviously, because you declared. Um, but if you've got anything to say? This would add quite a lot to the Memorial Hall. It um, is going, hopefully going to be put in a very narrow area, which is frequently uh, full of cars and it makes it very difficult to get into the main car park, which is down the bottom. So it will be very prominent and very easy to get to uh, and will serve more than one purpose and I would fully support it. Thank you very much. I'll take that then, um, ladies and gentlemen, as an affirmation of support then, shall I? Everybody spoke in favour. Thank you, John, if you could make a note of that. Thank you very much. And when you're ready, let's go to item four. Uh, thank you. Item four is an application from Milton Colts Football Club, which is for the part funding of a Parrot roll cart travelling sprinkler uh, to allow irrigation and maintenance for the pitches, which you can see in the image. And the uh, piece of equipment is the, the, the red wheel thing that you can see on your screen as well. Uh, the applicant feels that with the right irrigation, the pitches can be uh, returned to an improved condition, uh, allowing more games of football. And apparently, uh, according to the applicant, the Cambridgeshire FA have rated the pitches poor due to the hard nature of the ground. They have stated that they have raised £400 uh, towards this project from other sources. Uh, the source of that £400 is not immediately obvious. However, having gone through their accounts, I cannot see any record of a grant from Milton Parish Council. At this point, I should say as well, unfortunately, I made an error in uh, this. So uh, the total project cost is £1,430.82. That 4,000 figure is actually the cost of the uh, Memorial Hall car park. Uh, so with the total uh, applied for is 1,000 pounds, they already have the 400 pounds. So this will be for the total remaining sum uh, to buy the roller. Thank you very much, members. Would like to go first? Um, could I ask? Um, please, please do, Claire. Yeah, thanks. Um, well, we need to know what um, Milton Parish Council is going to uh, contribute. Can I answer that, please, Chair? Yeah. Uh, we, we have we have uh, attempted to contact Milton Parish Council, but they haven't responded. Um, is that correct, John? Uh, yes, we, we we phoned them. Have we, have we written to them? I know it's a stupid, stupid question, but the parish council? Uh, we have not yet. Right, okay. Um, 
this isn't going to be exactly. Um, I'll come to you in a second, so for my, so just so you put your hand up. Um, it's not going to be absolutely desperate at the moment. It's going to be coming into the rainy season, so to speak. So we do have time, I'm sure, to sort this out. But um, I wonder if the Milton Parish Council are working from home, so to speak, and not answering the phone, just doing emails. <coughs> so it, it might be during, given these circumstances. OK, uh, Sue, please, and then Peter. I just wonder if the district councillors involved were supportive. Thank you. Peter? Um, can I just check with John uh, the total amount? Uh, John, did you say it was 1,600? Uh, I'm, I'm very sorry. The correct amount should be 1,430 pounds and 82 pence. So in other words, if we make the grant and they have raised themselves uh, 400, although it says from other sources, then that means no contribution from the parish. Uh, that That is a logical conclusion. So, so reference the previous question. I think in all fairness to the other parishes, we have to say um, there has to be some match funding. Yeah. Councillor Hanley. Uh, I don't need to take any time. John has just said what I was going to say, so I won't say it again. Thank you. Could, could I ask, uh, and, and this is a sort of general Peter, question. Sorry. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Go ahead, Claire. OK, sorry. Um, OK, on, on these forms, which I really like, the new style forms, where it says documentation status, and then it says incomplete, and in the previous one, incomplete, what, what does that mean? Does that mean that you haven't had information from the parish council or, or what? Uh, there are four pieces of equip uh, of information that, that, that are required, um, including the uh, mission statement of the uh, organization, a, uh, a budget from the organization, a quote from the organization, and also a statement of, uh, I've forgotten the correct terminology for it. Um, intent. Intent. Uh, Safeguarding, safe, uh, a, a, a safeguarding statement. Okay. Um, all of these uh, have not yet had the uh, the safeguarding uh, statement yet, so they are technically incomplete. Uh, but uh, with 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 Milton Colts Football Club, the only the only thing that is has not been received is the uh, is the safeguarding. Sorry, I just want to follow that up, Joe, because I think it's relevant to others. So does that mean that um, were we to agree, for example, in this case, were we to have agreed this morning that um, that they would get a grant, they couldn't get the grant until they had the safeguarding statement? Uh, uh, yes, Councillor, that's that's uh, that's correct. The the um, the letter that we send out, the form letter that we send out, we, uh, basically say, states uh, that these things need to be provided and that it's a conditional uh, uh, a, a conditional grant based upon upon receiving those things. Okay. Right, uh, John and Jay. Um, my, the, the, as Claire's already said, the the new style for the for the application, I think, from our point of view, is extremely good. I, I really like this. I just wonder where, where you say documentation documentation status, and then you put the word complete, complete, uh, incomplete, whatever. However, you want to do this. I just wonder if we, if it's only four four pieces of data that you're going to be looking for. Um, can that just be put in there, the ones that are missing in that, um, in that box? Chair, uh, we are in the process of updating the online form uh, such that it would be impossible to make an application without all of the uh, without all of the information. So hopefully by the by the next uh, time that this comes to grants advisory committee, uh, we won't need to put in any box with regards to documentation status because it will be impossible to make an incomplete application. OK, now just on the basis of what Claire said with regards to these last two we've seen, so are the first two incomplete as well. And I'm assuming that the uh, the public open space, the Ultra Road community play area, that certainly needs a safeguarding uh, document. And so if they're unconstituted and what have you, that's going to be a bit of a 
a tall ask potentially unless they've got one for the other space which they can then use for this or whatever adapt it so okay right um so there's work to do then yes yeah, with, the parish, I, with the parish can, council could i add one thing joe's yeah i mean this may be something that you as a committee think about every time but i i, I firmly believe you get an application like this um, the, the parish council have got to show support for it. I, I've, I've come across it many times in parish council meetings where they say, well, we don't need to give them any money. Go and see, go and speak to the district. Yeah. And I really do feel that as a, almost as a policy that we should be expecting parish councils to be supporting this kind of thing before we support them. That would be we, my first we, idea. The, the, the policy is that there should be match funding from the parish yeah. council so i'm assuming that they either haven't approached the parish council or the parish council have rejected them one way or the other so that's for the, this applicant to have that conversation again jay thanks joe uh, i just wanted to say that the reason why we take applications to committee that are incomplete is based on what has happened in the past and we have been asked to bring applications to committee whether they're complete or not because I think the idea behind it was to sort of move the applications through as fast as possible and just because they haven't responded with their safeguarding statement shouldn't mean it holds up the actual decision because it makes no material difference because if you awarded the grant and they didn't provide it then we wouldn't give them the money do you see what I mean so mm -hmm. That was the idea behind it but we're more than happy as, as we said we've looked at the web form and we found a solution that we can actually get all of this information up front to mean when we come to you we have every box ticked which i do think is a better idea but just saying the reason why we do this this way at the moment is because we're trying to push the applications through and we will make sure all the conditions are met before we award the money um but yeah that was why i just wanted to say that you know it's based on yeah a, a previous decision to to operate like this yeah i, I totally appreciate yeah. that aj I, I mean this has been a a review of this as you, when you you came in to the to take over the the review of it and i think this is is terrific that you've done it i mean that's that's you know hats off um, um I, well, I think we're all, we're always conscious all of us we're always conscious of the amount of time that we spend and we've only got four applications here. You know, i think that's probably what's driving the comments from members as well is that you know if the parish has refused point blank or whatever i suppose you could argue then bring that with the basis that the parish have refused flatly to, to put any money forward but if they haven't been asked or there hasn't been any kind of engagement between the group and the parish then that's wasting our time if you like here where when we have the new applications and we'll sometimes have five ten fifteen of them in, in a row so rather than have to go through that i think the new system is going to be excellent in weeding out that process for us and you i suppose john um just to say i did uh yesterday go through all of the parish council meeting notes from uh milton parish council uh for this year and uh, I cannot see that it was ever brought to uh, council as a uh, as an application for funding. Thank you. And now, Jay, that's another example where officers are going over the, the extra mile. And I think John, Councillor Williams, this has to be noted. OK, officers are going extra mile to try and help applicants do the best they can with their with mm. their applications. Um, but that's yeah. that, that's a fairly onerous task, I would have thought, to go through all that lot. And hats off to you, John, for doing it, and thank you. But this is this is probably where Claire has come from with regards to why haven't we got why haven't they done what they meant to have done? And I think the update yeah. of the website and the requirement to have that information in place will do us a whole power of good. Claire. Um, yeah. So I just wanted to follow with that, and I think um, John uh, John London, that is. Uh, thank you very much for, for checking, but also I think it's always useful and, and perhaps will save time to email the local members saying and ask them do they know about it and have they mentioned it to the Parish Council. As it happens in this case, I think two local members are members of Milton Parish Council. Um, so if they haven't heard about it, that, that would be a good way in. I suspect that they've not heard about it. OK, in that case, then before I go to Jay and then John Williams, uh, can you take your hand down, please, Claire? Uh, yes, I have. Uh, thank you, John. 
Um, that might be another little entry. Have local members been? Is this 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 form that we're looking at now? Is that computer generated from the website? Uh, no. So, oh, right. so that's that's hand filled, so to speak. Uh, no, we what we've what we've done behind the scenes, as it were, is um, uh, previously this was going through uh, several different departments uh, of of officers. Uh, so what we're doing is we we've collated all of the information together onto an Excel spreadsheet, and then this is um, uh, this is basically sections from that from that master spreadsheet that that is then reformatted uh, to give to you. In that case, could you add another line? Because I think there's probably room for the local members, whether yes, or not they've been contacted, because that's been a theme this morning. Local members contacted, yes, no, or can't be bothered to answer. <laughs> let's put the yeah, onus on there. Let's put that. the onus on us all, because I have yeah, been in the past. I was in Melbourne. Guilty of not responding. So um, <laughs> I've just stitched myself up and put my head in the noose. OK, Jay. Thanks, Jase. Yeah, just to just to reassure you that at, at the same time we actually bring applications through to grants at committee, e even if they've only been, you know, we've taken grants here that we've only received sort of five days ago before. So that's often why all of the information isn't yet received. But we didn't ev ever see that as a barrier to to a decision. But anyway, I think that's self now anyway going forward because we will have all the information. None of what's been said is a criticism, Jay. No, None know, at all. This is only like to help make the whole thing smooth. Yeah, John Williams. Yeah, what used to happen is that I seem to recall that the local member used to get an email yeah. um, asking if we supported the application. Do we not do that anymore? Uh, I, Yes, we should do that. Uh, this is where I need to um, uh, apologise uh, for for being um, uh, <laughs> uh, effectively. I was off sick uh, last week at the time. I would normally have done that in the lead up to this, so I'm, I, I apologise for that. Uh, this is this is this is a, a piece of process that, sh that that should occur that hasn't. Right, uh, Councillor Dalton. I don't think I had anything else to add other than that. I mean, I think um, it's a good application and it's exactly the sort of thing that we should support. Um, but um, I, I do think that we're missing the information about the parish council. OK, it's just your hands up on my screen, Claire. OK, uh, right. Two people haven't said much, Peter and Sue. Sue? You're still muted, my friend. Thank you. I only said fiddlesticks. Um, <laughs> I can lip read, Sue. <laughs> it was true. It was true. Um, I think the application's fine. I do think we need to know whether the parish council agree. I do think we need to know whether the district council has any uh, member has any thoughts about the application. Great, thank you. Peter? Uh, yeah, nothing Nothing else to add. Uh, I think um, Sue's identified the two key issues. OK, then we'll leave this with officers then, yeah? So we're kind of essentially deferring this for information, OK? Thanks. Right, I think that's, that's it on the community uh, grants. John, yeah? Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time. And Jay, thank you very much for the, the effort and everything that uh, the team are putting in. That is superb. No problem. Um, superb. Do you mind if I excuse myself from the meeting because we've got some COVID stuff to sort out? So. Yeah, have a meal. OK, great <laughs> stuff. Thanks, mate. Thank Cheers. You. Thanks, John. I will also excuse myself to, to, to go um, uh, deal with children, if that's OK. Yeah, okay. porridge. Porridge, I think it wasn't. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. OK, on to agenda item number five, which is the mobile warden scheme expansion grant applications. And I believe this is very firmly in uh, Leslie's uh, section. <laughs> Over to you, Leslie. Thank you. Morning, everybody. Um, yeah, so two papers this morning re relating to the expansion of the mobile warden schemes across the district. Um, 
in the first paper, we're asking committee just to formally recommend the decision to award the procurement uh, delivery of service to Aid UK. And then in the second paper, we are recommending committee to award grant funding uh, to the parishes of Gamlingay, Longstanton, and then a joint uh, application for Lulworth and Fendrayton. Thank you very much. OK, members, does anyone want to go first? This is a piece of work that we've been working on for a while. It's been backwards and forwards, and I have to say from, from having discussions with us, the procurement process has gone remarkably well. Um, and obviously the, the, the work that we've all put in and especially Leslie and the team with regards to getting it all sorted and very, very nicely the sum of money that John's provided, that's even better. Um, Bill. Fully support it, Chairman. Um, and uh, yeah, as you say, it's been an excellent piece of work. Um, it would have been probably brought before you um, much earlier if it hadn't been for COVID. So it's it's you know long overdue really we need it and fully support it. Thank you. I think we didn't get it earlier. It's just because Leslie had a day off. That's all it was really. <laughs> okay, uh, Claire. Yeah. Um, could I just ask about the age uh, limit, the the age cutoff, the seventy um, age cutoff? If you could just talk us through uh, the reasoning behind that, Leslie. Um. When we looked at, <clears throat> I think when we looked at the data um, from the JSNA, the Joint Strategic Needs Assessment, um, and we use the fingertips. Who does um, the Who does the Joint Strategic Needs Assessment? It's the Cambridge Research Group based at County Council. So they look at they collect all the data and they produce the JSNAs, um, and they also uh, look at the population data. Um, and they build the uh, information that's on the Cambridgeshire Insight, um, which looks at, you can look at pop, uh, parish level data. So um, numbers of households, um, age range, um, employment, um, number of people that own their homes, number of people that live in poverty. So you have all that level of data. Um, and what we, we used uh, the 70 year cutoff as an idea of um, I think there are there are 65 year olds and there are 65 year olds. Um, so there are some very, very healthy 65 year olds. Um, and if we use the 65 year old cutoff, I think that we would have had a much greater um, number of strategic sites. So in order with in relation to the amount of money that we had to spend, we had to be really clear about where those priority sites were. So we used the 70 plus cutoff for that. But of course, the service is available for anyone that is either vulnerable. So it's not just for the 70 plus. That was just really to identify the strategic sites. So you don't have to be 70 plus to apply to, um, uh, you know, um, be become client. part of the, a, a scheme. It's for anyone that's vulnerable. Um, and living, either living alone, they can be living in partnership with someone else, but they have to be vulnerable. OK, uh, thank you. That, that's very helpful. And I just wanted a very quick follow up question on that. So the JSNA or JNSA, yeah. um, the, those statistics, that data, how often is it updated? Annually. Good, thank you. Uh, Sue? Thank you. Um, I'm very supportive of the Mobile Warden Scheme. We have one in Swavesea which works very, very effectively. And um, I heard from our, our um, Mobile Warden how she has adapted to meet the needs of COVID and the needs of very isolated, very lonely people um, during this last period. But the one thing I wanted to draw people's attention to is the Fendrayton Lulworth one, which is in my patch. And um, I think it it really does set a precedent in that it is going to be cross boundary with Huntingdonshire because it will um, be covered the, the whole 
when it comes together will include Fenstanton and Fenstanton are finding the majority of the money to support a warden. Um, so Lulworth, which has 78 people living in it, not all of them over 70, I have to say, but seeing as I went to primary school with most of them, they're all about that age. Um, and um, Fen Stanton, uh, Fen Drayton, who are not that much bigger, um, it, it, it really is an example of how we can work together for our really small villages where they are a lot of people who have lived there a really long time and want to go on living there until they die. Um, and this will support them. And when you think Lulworth has one road in and it's the same road going out, um, very little in the way of public transport, very little in the way of support from anybody else. They look after their elderly to an extent, but there's still things like shopping and that that people do for them. I think this is a real example and, and we should see how well it works and try and build it into the the Conningtons, the Natwalls, the the tiny little villages that we have in our patch. Well said. well said, Sue, well said. Peter. Uh, thanks. Yeah, I really wanted to talk about the um, uh, the options because when we're making this decision, we have to look at the uh, options uh, because of the surplus. There's the 11,982 and, um, you know, implications of that. So I just wanted to speak to that. Um, I'd like Leslie's view, but personally, I'd like to go for option three, which is recommend a second round of grant funding. Um, because it would be easy to just top up the funds for the existing schemes um, and there may be a case for that, but it really would be nice to see it extended uh, wider. Thank you. Take your hand down, Pete. Thanks. Claire, would you like to speak? Um, yes, I'm very supportive of this. I have been all along this extension of the mobile warden scheme. I mean, the discussions have been around now for two years at least. John, well, John Williams will uh, um, correct me on that, but I think that's right. It's been around, so it's really good to see it coming to fruition. Um, and on the options, I, I, I would like to support Peter's recommendation as well. Great stuff. Uh, Bill? I, no, I, I I agree with what Peter, Peter, who I'd called John earlier, sorry, it's for Peter, Peter, Peter's view I support. Um, I, I, yeah, I couldn't be more supportive of all this. Thank you. OK, um, I'm, I'm obviously in the same uh, ballpark. I'm fully supportive. I'm not sure whether or not Aaron and I have to declare an interest as I'm a trustee of a mobile warden scheme in Melbourne, but seems that we're not getting any of this money anyway it's kind of irrelevant perhaps but perhaps just for the record um yeah i can see options uh, option three is probably going to be the best once people start to see this being rolled out that the the uh grass is always greener and people go oh, i wish i'd done that so there would be their money for them to come and do this i would kind of like to just broach the subject of adding in number four as a, as a measure, given the fact that um, a lot of these schemes are going to be dealing with extreme loneliness and isolation, especially being exacerbated by the COVID situation that we've suffered this year, I just sometimes wonder whether or not we just need to have that in mind that some of the existing schemes may just need a little bit of help, just a little bit. I'm not saying thousands and thousands, because there's, correct me if I'm wrong, Leslie, there's the 11,982 and then there's the 45,000. Yeah, in so we have. Section. Absolutely. So, yeah, yeah an additional I'm, 56. Yeah, I'm not suggesting anywhere near that as supplementary payments and what have you, but I just think if we can leave the door slightly ajar, Councillor Williams, just in case that these these things hit the fan, so to speak, um, it might be it might be advantageous, but I do absolutely support the the idea of going out again for a second round. 
Could, could I also just um, add, uh, in, in relation to what Joseph just said, when we've been talking to the parishes about setting up new schemes, they all love, most of them love the idea of setting up the schemes, but their their greatest concern is the ongoing funding. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's great that we are supporting or, or providing full funding for the next two years, but there is great fear from all of these schemes that, well, what, well, what happens after two years and, and where are we going to get this funding from? So there's going to, you know, if, if this is something, if this is a priority for the council and this is something that we really support, I think we really need to think about ongoing funding for these schemes in the future and and at the moment we we provide very little um, as a proportion of their total funding to those existing schemes so i think we, we do need to consider that as well thank you John, john's glazed over now <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Sorry. Peter. Peter. <laughs> um yeah it was uh, really in response chair i think to your comments and this is really Councillor Williams' call. Uh, I mean, the way to, to deal with that issue you raised of top ups maybe being required is to um, place a contingency. So, so in other words, we take, for example, 80% of the money under option three and look for new parishes and you hold 20% for top ups. But that's really John's call. It, John's that, smiling. Well, actual fact, Peter, that's what we did with the money in the first place and we did the the procurement exercise and the actual in-house with the parishes doing it themselves or whatever. So that's that's perfect as a solution. John, uh, yeah, can, can, you, can you, John, when you speak, would you mind smiling all the time? <laughs> and, uh, can I first of all, thank Leslie for the enormous amount of work she's doing. Absolutely. And, and also, uh, I'm sure, and, uh, you know, she's done a great job with the parishes. I mean, yes, I mean, this has always been an issue um, as to, you know, how we fund this going forward. Um, and I think there was some concern that when we come to the end of the two years, there would be an expectation that we would continue to fund these schemes in full and all the existing schemes, because that would be unfair, wouldn't it, if we were continuing to fund these schemes, but not others. And I think the decision was taken that we would continue, we would expect parishes to contribute, um, to be fair. So, I, and, you know, it has been made clear to these parishes to the common board that, you know, this, this two years gives them a chance to secure funding um, to enable these schemes, schemes to continue. Um, you know, we will continue to fund some, you know, we provide some funding for them, but at the end of the day, we would expect these schemes to stand on their own two feet like the existing schemes do, uh, with parishes contributing or finding other benefactors to contribute towards them, as well as us putting in some money as well. But it, but, you know, that is the basis on which we've set these up. And as I say, you know, these parishes have two years to organise that with our support. And I think any, uh, and I'm quite happy that we should go out and seek a second round. But again, you know, this has to be on the basis that um, we need to talk about this within the budget because clearly we're now well into the first year of this. So what happens with the second round? Do they only get one year? of support or do we roll forward some of that money into a third year to support those parishes that come in on the second round uh, given that we're not likely to have them on board until well into the end of this year and and maybe the start of the next financial year so we need to bear that in mind as well but um, I, I, I hope that parishes do see the benefit of this and realise how important it is to their residents and are able to contribute something towards it to, you know, match what we're funding and also to seek other sources of funding. I mean, take Tevisham, for example, they have marshals um, supporting their scheme. Um, now, that happens to be marshals because they're on their doorstep, but, you know, maybe in some of these other parishes, 
there are businesses that are on their doorstep. Uh, I'm thinking of Gambling Gate, for example, which, which has some, um, you know, substantial companies um, that they could approach them for 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 funding. Um, and hopefully by the end of the two years, we come to a situation where, like the existing schemes, there is a num there are a number of sources of funding to enable these to go forward. Um, yeah, we just have to see. The problem we've got is that if we if South if South Camps were to take on this on its own and fund all these schemes, first of all, we would have full foul of the <laughs> of state aid rules, and and we would have to go out and tender for the whole lot. So we wouldn't be able to have the current um, you know mismatch with local support and. Um, being able to tailor things to local circumstances, we would have to go and tender all of these schemes and it will cost an absolute fortune, you know, way beyond the means of, of, of the council. So we have to ensure, we have to make this work and we have to um, persuade parish councils and emphasize to them that the only way these schemes are going to continue is if they also give some financial support and help us identify for, you know, other financial support to enable these schemes to go forward. But the idea of setting these up was to show that there was a demand and that um, it's a worthwhile thing to do. And you know, at the end of the day, these parishes can increase their precepts, unlike us, you know, where we, we are limited to five pounds a year, um, these parish councils can have no limit. So they could increase their precepts and I hope it will show that that's a worthwhile thing to do. Thanks, John. If you could put your hand down a minute. Before I come to you, Claire, it's something you said earlier, John, with regards to the two year uh, support that we're offering on this, these now. If we do go out and we bring other people in and you said, are we going to offer them one or extend it? Our mission statement, if I recall, was to try and bring everything in line. So all the grant funding, the two, the three years and all the rest of it. So we then start to go back to where we were with a, a constant. I mean, officers can perhaps um, advise us best you know the best way forward with that and if it's not going to be a problem then so be it um but perhaps that's something less that, you might, that's what might I'm like saying, to think. You know, yeah we want to get back to where we were last year which was that we supported these schemes but we didn't fund them in total yeah and uh, and that's what the situation we want with these new schemes but i do recognize that you know at the, the ones in the first round would have the benefit now of having two years before they need to and and I think it may be a bit unfair to have parish councils coming forward for the second round only having one year to sort things out and I think yeah. we need to take that into account well, okay. the, the, with the still expectation that after two years they should be you know funding them in a, along the same lines as everybody Else. OK, I mean, the, the question then begs, if I may, before, sorry, Claire, I'm going to come to you in a sec. Uh, the question begs with regards to the options then, which is going to be best is should it be a mix of options or should we not do the second round if you if we are concerned about the fairness of contributions from others and the length of time they will be supported? So perhaps that's something that. Do we need to discuss that now? as part of this acceptance or recommendation to you, John. Can I suggest that if you do agree with three, yeah, uh, that we ask Leslie to come back to the next meeting with a paper to identify how that will, how that will happen going forward. W would you be willing, John, to have a, a mix of three and four, as Peter suggested, with a percentage? Uh, yeah, sure. I, I think, though, that needs to be taken Sorry, I think that's. I, I don't want to be using this pot of money that's been set up specifically to to um, grow the scheme to be used for existing schemes. I would rather Leslie comes back with a with a with a proposal that we should be upping the budget to take account of 
changing circumstances for the existing schemes rather than take money out of the pot for for um, which has been identified specifically to set up new schemes. OK, you see where I'm coming from. Yeah, I do. I, do. I don't want to muddy. I don't want to muddle the water, the muddy the water by taking money out of a pot that's there for new schemes to support existing schemes that should I, be justified on its own merit. Merits. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely so agree and, and concur. In that case, could I just, just while we're on that particular subject, Leslie, would it be something that you could look at with the potential for the existing schemes? Because the COVID situation is already going to be an issue for them now and how they're dealing with things now. So there may be extra PPE they're buying and heaven knows what else and stuff like this. So there may be a financial strain on them now. And yeah. so that's if, if that thing could be presented to you then, John, that would be great. Claire, I'm so sorry, you've been waiting there patiently. But you're still on mute. <laughs> you're on mute. No, right, I'm ready to go now. Um, OK, so a couple of questions. Um, one is that um, when we broadened out the scheme, um, we wanted to make sure that there was a spread as much as possible across the district. Um, so I wanted to ask Leslie whether she thinks that is happening and where she is uh, with negotiations at the moment. How many uh, I mean, I know one at least in, in, in this ward, but how many are is she still talking to about the possibility of joining a scheme? Well, um, in terms of spread across the county, um, north of the A14, so the northern villages, um, we've got a very, very good spread. Um, and actually, if you track it against a primary care network, um, so if a if we were get going for GP referrals, um, in most of the villages around that northern what we call the northern PCN, um, you would pretty much be able to um, access a mobile warden scheme. Apart from those, you know, the as Sue mentioned earlier, the kind of the Knapwell, Boxworth, um, Connington, those kind of very remote, remote tiny villages. Um, then if you go south, um, if you looked at the Granter medical practice, actually every single parish under the Granter medical practice, once the, you know we, we get approval, will have cover from a mobile warden scheme. Um, Age UK have got a very, I think they've pretty much covered most of those schemes um, to the east, southeast, which is kind of the Fullbourne down to Shudy Camps and Castle Camps area, they're all covered. So it leaves that little area in the middle, which I would say is the kind of A428 corridor. So one of the schemes that we will be setting up as part of this new uh, expansion will cover some the majority of those villages, but it still leaves lots of little parishes. So although we're uh, under the procurement exercise, we've awarded, we, we identified kind of seven lots. Within those lots are multiple villages. So it's not just seven parishes that will be getting a mobile warden scheme. Um, I think we're ex expanding it to 21 parishes in total. Um, but that still leaves a lot of parishes without, um, and it would need substantial investment if we were to cover all of them. Um, so I hope that answers that question. Then in terms of, of talking to or negotiating with parishes at the moment, I haven't done anything for the time being until we this is settled. And once I know that we've got some more money to spend, then I'll go back out and start um, those discussions with parishes. OK, thank you. That's very helpful. I mean, it'd be really nice to sort of plot that on a little map. Yes, I can demonstrate that or illustrate it on a map. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Thanks. Brilliant. Bill. Yeah, just one sort of final thought from me. Um, in a number of uh, situations uh, in the Age UK scheme, more than one village is involved in setting up the mobile warden. Um, I, I can speak only really from over in Willingham, where there is concern that if at the end of two years, one of the two partners decides to pull out because they're concerned about the ongoing costs, then the other village, you know, the other village is worried that they might have to take on extra costs. Um, that that's that's a real concern with the parishes. I, I don't know if there's anything we can do to reassure them uh, that if that were to happen, that they wouldn't uh, suffer a big shock. Yeah. 
to answer that, I, th I think yeah. what we need to do in those circumstances is, that, is to look at possibly reorganising the, the particular uh, schemes so that perhaps it will then could be taken into another scheme, scheme to, in an attempt to keep the, the cost down for the parish. Um, but I, you know, obviously that is a that is a that is a problem. But I'm as, as I say, I'm hoping, and this seems to be, you know, experience from other parishes that have set up these schemes, is that, um, you know, I can for, take Tevisham for example. I I don't think they would e ever think their big issue in Tevisham is that of course that they're they're finding that the number of um, you know, the, the number of customers has been falling. Um, their big issue has been trying to keep it viable because they've had fewer uh, people um, taking it up. Um, so, you know, the, these these are flexible. These are, the, you know, these the schemes are flexible. They're going to have to be flexible to take account of changing circumstances going forward. But uh, you know, the, the, the overall people are living longer um, they will need um, care at home uh, more. And so overall, taking the district as a whole, there will continue to be a demand, increasing demand for these schemes, but the schemes themselves are going to have to be flexible to meet the changing situations as we as we go forward. As I say, mm -hmm. if you look at Tevisham, actually the number of um, you know, um, customers is, is falling and are having age UK have been having difficulty in identifying new um, new new customers for for the service. Um, so in that circumstance, it could well be that you know in a couple of years time, Tevisham will will have to maybe Tevisham will stop, but another scheme will fall, will take it over. You know, a, a neighbouring. Um, scheme will take it over and maybe Tevisham Parish Council will contribute something towards that um, uh, neighbouring scheme. But, you know, it has to be flexible. You cannot say, you know, this is the situation and it will continue because we are dealing with people, you know, and, uh, and as we know, you know, and people's health and, and age and, and it's a moving feast. Sure. Can so, I come back? Would you mind if I come back, Joe? We've got gone in building then, so yeah, OK, it's just the, um, going back on this. It's almost like I'm, I'm saying that there is a kind of a setup cost here because. I can tell you that Willingham, there was on, there was a, there were objections on the parish council to in uh, to, to putting the mobile warden scheme in. And I know they're asking questions about what happens if over pulls out. So um, now I hope to goodness that Willingham Parish Council don't say we're not taking that risk and we're pulling out. I do hope they don't do that. But there is a small chance of it. Uh, I just wonder whether or not I could go to them or, or Leslie could go to them and say, look, there is a contingency um, that if that happens, you, you know, you won't you won't uh, bear the full cost of the ex of, of, of the fact that overs pulled out. It, it's a real it's a real worry for, for, for them. Um, it really is. So before I come to you, uh, please forgive me. Um, Bill, this is um, this is something that's very close to my heart. Having been a trustee of the Mobile Warden Scheme in Melbourne for 10, 11 years, whatever it is now, um, one of the things that we enjoy is full support from the three parishes that the scheme now runs. It just used to be Melbourne. It's now Melbourne, Meldriff and Shepworth. And without fail, those three parishes contribute. Melbourne contributes something like five, five and a half thousand, whatever it was this year. So a lot of money. But that commitment has to be there. And I think uh, this is what John has been saying with regards to parishes. If a parish has a, a scheme running in their area, frankly, they just need to think about how they're going to help fund it. I mean, it, it, there's no two ways about it. The ultimate and perfect opportunity and, and, and uh, solution would be to say to county council, oh, by the way, your adult social care budget needs to add in X, Y and Z for all of our all these mobile warden schemes. I mean, we are lucky in Melbourne. I get 7,700 from county. I think that scheme is the only one in in Cambridge, as far as I know, Cambridgeshire, as, as far as I know. 
that should be rolled out a bit further. That money being spent on the 50, 60 people that this scheme looks after is valuable insofar as keeping people out of residential care. So the cost of residential care against a small little bit of money that's there. So this might be a conversation that has to be had. I'm sure officers are all over this like a rash. So that's great. So I'll say no more on that. But the, my, my point is, you, you said about the Paris Council you, 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 you mentioned. I wonder why they would be that way. I wonder why they would argue that if this is such a benefit to their own residents, um, sure, surely a small amount of money on the precept is not, or however they do it, is not beyond the wit of man. Three, three, three parish councillors, unfortunately, who are quite um, influential, were against it on ideology, ideological grounds. Right. And that is, but fortunately, all of the other parish councillors were very supportive. I, th I suspect in two years time, the people who want this to continue will, will hold sway. Good. But, Good. but, 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 um, it just worries me that they might persuade the doubters to say, look, you know, we might end up with a big cost after two years if over pull out. Um, I'm just wondering whether or not we can just say to them, look, there is a, an insurance policy here. If that happens, this will kick in. Right. I have done this to poor old Claire earlier and I'm doing it to Sue now. So, Sue, please speak up. I do apologise, ladies. I'm, I'm dreadful. <clears throat> We're the aged brigade. No, you're not. <laughs> right, so. Um, I had um, calls to to meet the uh, age UK uh, officer responsible for mobile wardens in this patch on last Monday. And she was very keen on um, the, the schemes that are being produced, uh, provided here and the, the proposals that are being made. But also I talked with her about some of the issues that Bill is raising. And, and we did talk about the fact that certainly with COVID, there have been more people at home who have popped around to granny rather than going to work. And so um, our, our numbers in Swavesea have dropped from 17, 18 with a waiting list to 14, 15. Um, and there's a little anxiety about what's going on here. But very much what came through from that conversation was that Age UK would facilitate the networking and rebirth if you like, of ideas to cover the patch in order to ensure that we did draw in the little villages. Because, you know, I was talking a few moments ago about Fendrayton and Lulworth. We feel that when that's set up and we have a warden who is toddling between Fenstanton, and Fendrayton and Lulworth, it won't be as difficult to persuade Foxworth to add a, uh, a, a person or two, and Ellsworth to add a person or two, or Connington and that will, so that we will be able to increase that network and, and cover a wider patch. And I think age concern are the key to ensuring that we don't drop into a big hole and that we do continue to move forward as things develop across the patch. Thank you, sir. Leslie. Well, I, I was going to say as well that um, part of the contract with Age UK is that they work with the parishes over the next two years to look at options for funding in the future. And the fact that we are asking parishes to work together is a much more sustainable solution than just having one warden in each parish. So I would say with Over and Willingham working together, it's much more likely to um, succeed in the longer term because they are working together and it keeps the costs down for both the parishes. Um, and I, having spoken to Age UK yesterday, 
uh, they will you know they're going to contact Willingham and over and try and set up a meeting between the two of them just to kind of thrash through some of those issues and get assurances from both sides so age uk will play a major part in in ensuring that that you know that, that these these schemes succeed in the long term thank you leslie right members um john is it important because we do need to go to the recommendation and where you go you're the lead I, I, <laughs> I was just going to ask sue actually she, she would be a great ambassador for us if she could make if she could within her own political group get support for this because I think one of the issues we've got with Willingham is that it is a political, it's been politicised a bit and um, we, I think we could all probably know who the who the suspects are and it would really help I think taking this forward if we could take the politics out of this and just get on with it. So you know if you could do something Sue I'd be very grateful. I've been trying this last 12 years, John. Come on. <laughs> right, guys, we need to make a decision for Leslie because the, the, the poor lady is going to be going through apoplexy in a minute. <laughs> right. Um, so uh, on page 16 of your agenda, item number 10, Grants Commit Advisory Committee is asked to review the report and agree to award the grant funding to the parishes of Gamlingay, Long Stanton and to the joint scheme for Lulworth, Lulworth and Fendrayton. So am I to, John, can you put your hand down for me, please? Thank you, you're confusing the life out of me. Um, am I to assume that we are all in agreement? The recommendation to the lead member for finance, that's a nod from everyone, Claire, yeah? And Peter? Yeah, thank you very much. And also with regards to the options via the discussions we've just had, it looks like that we're looking at number three, which is, uh, recommend a second round of grant funding to attract additional parishes to set up new schemes and that's a piece of work that Leslie will be doing and come back to us to see the, the viability but to keep everything sweet and tidy we'll should we agree to that as well for John's benefit and Leslie thank you very much on that one that's great okay moving on Leslie you're still on it's you number six for the procurement outcome for the mobile ward and scheme expansion So this really, we're, we're asking committee just to formally recommend um, that we uh, offer or we offer the um, procurement application to Age UK. Right. Do we have anything to discuss here? Because we have really, we have covered off. I, oh God, what's happened? Hang on. I hope you're still there. Here you are. Again for that. Sorry, I just touched my computer. It all went funny. Um, Claire? Yeah, I, I just wanted to ask a piece of information. Um, so this is, um, we talked about flexibility across parishes. Um, are, where does, is the um, procurement, is it for a standard service? No, it's not for a standard service. The, the reason we procured some of the services was if, if we had offered grant funding to all parishes, knowing that there were some where we really wanted to put a scheme in because of the higher numbers of um, elderly people there was no guarantee that they would apply for a grant funding based on some of these kind of longer term issues with regards to seeking funding once full funding from us um, ceased so the, the uh, i think the the way that we could ensure that we had a scheme set up was if we set it if, if we if it went out to procurement so that was the uh, the rationale behind that. Um, and then the, the, the additional money, uh, so the, that, that was 140,000 set aside for procurement and then the 60,000 was set aside for those schemes that weren't identified as a um, priority but wanted a scheme anyway. Does that answer your question? Um, yes, it does. Um, I suppose what I'm just wondering about is if it is, we want it to be flexible because obviously parishes and areas are very different but um, we want to avoid uh, falling into the trap that um, something could be offered in one area but not offered in another you know a sort of imbalance between the offering and and again you know it, it was it, there is flexibility in the service I think that um, even though for instance um, 
let's say we procured a, um, a service in Fullbourne, if the numbers were dropping off in Teversham, there's absolutely no reason why the Fullbourne and Teversham um, couldn't uh, join in, in the future to make it much more sustainable. So it's not just, it, you know, this is just to get the schemes up and running. What happens thereafter and how they evolve, um, you know, there is flexibility in that. OK, good. And, and I mean, obviously, you've mentioned two areas I know a lot about. So yeah. <laughs> OK, guys, anyone got any more comments on this? I'm looking at all the faces. Everyone's looking happy. OK, that's page 20 then. Uh, section 10 again, uh, item 10, the Grants Advisory Committee is asked to review the report and formally recommend a decision to award the delivery of the service to Age UK. Um, are we happy on that one? Options, okay, here we go. Grants. For, number one is to formally recommend to Cabinet that all or lots minus gambling may be awarded to the Age UK for delivery of mobile wardens scheme in each area, or two, formally recommend to Cabinet the procurement process be run for a second time giving reasons. I don't think we want to do two. <laughs> I think we'll stick with one, shall we? So it's a recommendation to John that it's uh, option one and that we approve. Uh, Aidan, can you put your hands up, please, so Aidan can see that we, we do. So that's uh, that's all of us, Aidan. That's unanimous. Thank you. I think it's Aaron. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> He answers to most things. Yeah. <laughs> I think he prefers Aaron. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, with a capital A. Right. OK. Um, Leslie, do you have anything else to add? Well, can I just clarify as well? Part of the discussion earlier was um, bringing another report back to, to committee uh, to suggest increasing the budget for the existing schemes going forwards. Is that yeah. is that correct? Yes. OK. Um, Lot, no, lots that, um, of money. Lots yeah. of money. <laughs> uh, not, nothing no, else I, to add. I, I, could, I, could I rephrase that? Because yeah. that suggests that actually answers the, you know, that putting the cast for the horse. Can you do a report on how COVID has affected the existing schemes um, and whether or not we need to increase our, our uh, support, financial support to them? John, John, no, I don't no want to prejudge the outcome because the outcome could be that actually it's they're actually finding their, that it's cheaper to run the schemes. So I don't I don't want to I, I know it's not going to find that, Joe, but I don't think we should preempt the outcome. of the No, I, 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 I'm not meaning we should preempt. But I, I think it's a, it's a two it's a two um, subject report, if you like. It's the generally if we are funding the schemes that we've just brought on board now for two years quite substantially. If you then look at the other schemes that perhaps might get £1,500 or, or 900 quid or whatever it happens to be, is that equivalent to the two year funding kind of process? And it, it was that really. Is it, should we look at how, how, how our existing schemes could benefit from a little extra, shall we say, annually, when, especially when we go to the, the two or three year cycle, as well as what is COVID. And I'm hoping by this time next year that COVID will be something that we talk about with our grandchildren that happened and uh, we can move on from it a little bit and get slightly back to normal. In which case, hopefully society will come back out again and everything will be sweet. But is there, is there, isn't there a danger though, Joe? If you ask the question, do you need more money? You might <laughs> get the answer, yes. No, no, no. I'm not suggesting that everyone <laughs> says, yes. hands up, who wants more money? I'm <laughs> suggesting that the, the report have two aspects to it. Yeah. OK. Leslie, are you OK with that? What John has been saying and flavours from elsewhere? I, I, I mean, I really would be supportive of you, Joe, uh, Joe but I, I'm, I just worry me that we might actually be deflecting money away from setting up new ones by offering money to existing um, uh, schemes, which could be supported by parish councils. No, no that's no, OK, no. Bill. I've, I've, oh, that I've, bit's covered I've, off. We, we, we've yeah. agreed that it should be separate. We should yeah. be. All right. OK. Yeah, no, that's all separate, buddy. That's all better. All right. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. Okay. Before we leave this item, because we're, I'd just like to say um, thank you to the lead member finance for taking this forward and pursuing it, really, uh, because we've been talking about it for quite a while and it's now come 
it, it's really going to make a difference, I think. So I just like to acknowledge uh, John. Well, that, that. We even got a smile out of him, Joe. Well, do you know what? I mean, when I look at the screen here, I have to say it's probably selfish of John, but I mean, he is getting on a bit, so he probably could do with the help later on. So, <laughs> listen, yeah, this actually, is me. I, <laughs> not long before I qualified. So. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, yeah. Um, so joining the full board scheme. <laughs> I'd, I'd just like to say to all of you, all, all of us, the team, uh, including officers, thank you so much for this. It's been a it's been a bit of a slog to get and we've got here where we are now. A lot of date, data and what have you that Leslie and and her team have pulled together for us. I can't thank you enough, Leslie. It's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. Um, and obviously the support of uh, Aaron and Jonathan in the background there for most of these these calls and what have you. It's been tricky. We normally do this face to face and have a cup of coffee and what have you, but it's it's been tricky and it's it is more difficult to do it like this. So I'd just like to say thank you. So Leslie, have you got anything else that you'd like to to say on on, on the subject or are, are you done? I, I believe I'm done. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. That's superb. Guys, has anyone else got anything to say with regards to anything? Uh, otherwise, I think we're done and I'll close the meeting. No, thank you. You're OK. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sue. In that case, ladies and gentlemen, members of the public, um, this is the end. This is the end. Poor old Sue needs, needs a, a quick break by the looks of it. This is the end of the meeting. Thank you very much. The next meeting is on Friday, the 30th of October at 10 a.m. And it will be a digital but a visual meeting as we are now on Teams. Thank you very much indeed and good night. Thank Jonathan, you. Can, you, can you feel the, kill the feed, Lee, uh, Jonathan?